Hi there, this is Charlie. Um, I'm doing something a little different this time. I'm actually going to record my face. I'm, I'm very nervous. I hope you guys like it uh, and um, look forward to your feedback. Sorry, all the ums and ahs are really bad, aren't they? I am a little nervous. Today, I want to talk about uh, something that I've been experiencing with a client over the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's about her domain names and her hosting and uh, just trying to get access to help her do something on her 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 website um i'll give you the background first i was going to give you the background a little bit later but i'm going to give you the background first and then i'll explain why this was all problematic uh this client contacted me and asked me to help her uh do some changes to her website she was having some trouble it should really have been a matter of me being able to log in make some changes to some theme files do some testing, get it all up and running. Bob's your uncle. We're all sleeping. We're all going. Um, to do that, I always ask for FTP access or hosting panel access. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong with my changes, I can then log in and, and reverse them out. I can make copies of files. I can make backups of files. I'm, I'm not worried that uh, I'm going to break something uh, and not be able to resolve it. It, it is just something that I do. Um, through experience more than anything that should have been easy that should have been a matter of her being able to give me uh, the login details to her hosting panel her, her admin to her hosting panel uh, and or create me an FTP account um, so getting access to the hosting account was well sorry the C panel hosting panel account was just terrible it, it was one of the worst experiences I've, I've had um she gave me her, her login details i went to connect to the site and got a no your ip has been banned i'm like well that's weird i've not been here before um i, I don't understand so change my ip address i refresh the router basically i'm on a dynamic ip address on the router refresh the router got a new ip address now i'm banned wow that that's strange um so I then said to her, okay, give me an FTP account. Uh, we did a screen share. I walked her through how to create the FTP account for me. I got the login details. I confirmed while I was on that call with her that I could actually log into that FTP account. Went back um, the next day or the day after to uh, actually start making the changes that we'd agreed on. And I was banned again. My IP address was blocked. Went back, couldn't access her account i couldn't access her website i couldn't access the hosting provider's website to put in a ticket to be able to ask for assistance okay so that's not ideal it really isn't so what i thought i'd do i i spoke to her at length about that after that and we decided that she was going to come across to my hosting um would make it easier my hosting i know and i love i love it because it's my hosting and i've set it up and i've got all my little tools and stuff on it um it's also with a really reputable provider so i'm not too concerned that if i have a problem i can actually go back to them and say hey i need a hand guys um and that that should have been the end of it she got a backup from um her cpanel she sent that across to me I created the hosting account. I uploaded all of the files. I got it all ready to go. I set up a Cloudflare account and set up the uh, DNS so that her mail stayed where it was. It was on her original host um, and pointed the website address to the website so that only the HTTP traffic would move across. We'd leave her mail where it was. I'd met, And then I would get in and do some backups so that we could get her mail across and she wouldn't lose anything. I like to be thorough. <laughs> it wasn't that easy. It really, it, it, it should have been that easy. It should have been as easy as her logging into her domain name management, changing the name service to Cloudflare, let Cloudflare handle all of that, that would brought her uh, hosting up on my, my hosting, her website up on my hosting, left her mail with her hosting provider, her current hosting provider. We saw the change go through. We saw it update. We saw it come back and say, yes, your name server's a change. Uh, I got notification from Cloudflare that the name servers had changed and they were now managing her DNS for her. Uh, the next morning, 
I, so I checked, I, I then went and checked and no, it hadn't propagated. That's okay. That happens. It can take a little while. I'm living up in far North Queensland, which means I'm right on the edge of some of the networking hubs, which means we don't get all of the updates straight away. I, I deal with that. That's fine. I logged in the next day and it still hadn't updated. And I went back and checked on a couple of tools to say, who were your name servers with? And they had been pointed back to her, her, her hosting provider. So she contacted them and they said, oh, no, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to change your name servers to point to someone else. They must remain on our hosting, um, which, okay, that's their pro prerogative. So it is they incredibly give us a, bad. A, a, a very, 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 very bad. And I say that for them to do that in my opinion. opinion. The way they oh, suggested sure we handle that on that. and point the domain but at a new it's her domain name. hosting provider. What she does with was that to go is into C panel, uh, their admin panel, go to the DNS editor and change the A record for the site to point to the new hosting provider. Yes, that is an option. It's a very poor one. It's just it's just not great. And I can't get access. We, we've already established that I can't get access to her hosting provider, to her hosting account. So if something goes wrong, uh, it really is a matter of making sure the two of us are available. We can screen share and I can walk her through it rather than just being able to log in and just go and do it myself, which is really what she wanted me to do. That's why she'd come to me is to just have all this done for her. So that really leaves us with very few options available to us. Uh, I, I I actually suggested to her at that point that we transfer her domain name away to a registrar that we could um, then point the name service where we wanted to. We could do this changeover, make sure her sites aren't affected, blah, blah, blah. She agreed to that. I said, all right, so go back to your hosting provider now and ask them to ensure that the domain is unlocked or the domains because we were going to do several and uh, for them to provide you with the domain keys because they weren't on her uh, domain hosting panel either. And they came back and they said, no, no, we can't do that. If you want to do that, you have to cancel your service uh, and then disconnect your domain name from the service and then request the, do the, the domain keys and that the domains are unlocked. It's just so backwards. I, I just so so backwards. I, I I'm going to assume because I can't assume otherwise at this point, and we can't get straight answers out of this provider. That when we cancel the service and disconnect the domain name, the site will go down. We won't have a website up because she's cancelled the service. Because that site was handling the DNS, it will stop the dns resolving which means what that means is that if you type in her domain name it will say it can't be found which means it won't pick up the domain on the new hosting which is what we were trying to do in this phased cut over um, we then have to transfer the domain to my re registrar that can take a couple of days uh, and when i say a couple of days i've seen it take five to seven days to transfer uh I can get it done pretty quickly on my side, but then we rely on the uh, outgoing re registrar to approve the transfer out. And that can take a couple of days. If they don't approve it, it is done automatically on five days or something. So it can take a couple of days to do. Uh, once we get that onto the new registrar's account, I can get in, change the name service, point them back to Cloudflare, and it will all come up and work. And then I just make sure that all my all the sites are working the way they need to be. But we are talking now about another set of delays of five to seven days minimum. Highly likely that her account will not operate. Her websites will not operate while we're doing that. I can't guarantee that. And I'm happy to give an update later on as to whether that was my whether my assumption was in correct or not uh, and then we can go forward so okay I've given you a lot of waffle here as to what the issues were and and, and the saga that I've gone through um, the, the purpose of this this video is to explain why choosing your domain name registrar or your domain name reseller and your hosting provider is so so important um, it's not just that well, it is just that cheap isn't always cheap. Um, yeah, their package might look really good, but once you get into these sorts of things, what what happens? 
um, what happens if you can't get access to your admin panel because they've cut you out and you can't send them an email because they're blocking you um, and they don't have a phone number that you can ring? What happens then? How do you manage that? You've just lost your business asset. It is a business asset. You should be treating it as such. Um, do you actually have complete control over your domain name? Uh, can you log in and change the details on your domain name? Not just the name servers, but can you update your registrant email address? Some registrants change the email address. Now, the registrant details on the domain name are absolutely key. These are the ones that are used by the registrars to ensure that you have access to that domain name. Um, if you lose the keys and you can't get access to them, you can contact them and say, look, this is my email address. This is my details. Uh, you have to go through a fair amount of rigmarole, particularly with .com domains, to prove that you are the owner. They will need you to confirm that using that email address. If your email address is wrong on that, you, you've lost that domain again. Again, you've lost that domain. Um, now, I have noticed that a lot of uh, resellers uh, developers when they register a domain name for a client they will register it as theirs they will put their ABN in they will put their email address in um, and once they do that that is their domain name they might charge you for it but it is theirs so you need to make sure as as businesses that that's being looked after that you have that you actually have that registered in your name um, can you update phone numbers? Can you update addresses on it? Those those sorts of things are very, very important. Uh, can you change the admin and tech contacts for those domain names? Um, that there, there are two more contacts on the domain name. They're used for various different things. You should be able to update them. Um, what else have I got here? I've got a set of notes that I'm going through. Can you access your domain keys? Uh, I've spoken about those a bit earlier. These are the things that will allow me to transfer or you to transfer your domain to a new registrar. Um, if you don't have those keys that you can't transfer, you just can't. You need to get hold of them. And you get hold of them by logging into your um, domain account and saying, show me what my domain key is. Uh, can you unlock or lock the domain on your account. Now, to lock and unlock a domain, it is exactly as it sounds, it locks it, meaning that no one can get access to administer that account while that lock is on. And the only person who can really take that lock off is the um, domain account owner. Uh, and if it's unlocked, people can get in and make changes to it. So you do need to be a little careful. Yes, they need to be uh, have, have access via the domain account. Um, but you still need to be a bit careful. And if it's locked, you cannot transfer it. it it's got a transfer bar on it. The hosting provider is just as important. In fact, uh, I'm not going to say it's more important. I was, but I'm not going to now. Um, not after this. Uh, do you have access to the admin panel for your hosting account? You might not ever need it. That's fine. But it is your hosting um, if something happens and you need someone to get in to do something for you, you want to be able to log in and access it and do all your administration yourself. You don't necessarily want to have to ring the hosting provider and then explain to them what you're trying to... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll get that photo, that, that picture photo. Don't know where that came from. Um, can you create FTP accounts for people so that they can upload files, so they can do your management for you, so they can make changes to themes or um, scripts as needed? Uh, do, you, do you know what a digital provider is actually providing, supplying you? Are they providing you with a full-blown hosting account that's got a hosting admin panel, email accounts, FTP databases, etc.? Or is it something like WordPress.com where you get a website, you get some domain management capabilities, um, but they do everything else for you. You don't need access to the hosting um, account at that point. Or oh, sorry, the, the hosting management side of it. Um, so you, do, do you know what you're actually paying for when you pay your hosting fee every, every month or every year? How do the providers handle their updates, their server updates and its security? Um, Software updates all the time. I, those of you that run WordPress sites, we know that you log into your WordPress admin 
and nearly every day there's a new update, there's a new plugin update or WordPress is updated or something's changed. Um, take that lower, take that down to your server level um, for the software that you guys don't get to play with every day. In fact, you probably don't even really realize it's there. There's things like Linux that the servers run on, um, unless you're running a Windows server and then it's Windows, but you know, your operating system. Uh, the um, web server software, uh, in most cases for Linux servers, it's Apache. Uh, there's PHP, that's the scripting language that WordPress runs on. And if you're not running a WordPress site, you might be running Python or um, I'm going to use a really old one here, C or C++ uh, or something similar to that. Um, there is the database software, MySQL software, that runs the databases, that, that gives you all that functionality that allows you to have a database. Um, they all have updates regularly. They have updates. How are they handled? Do Does your server pr provider go through once every X period and do those updates? How often do they do those updates? How do they manage them? How do they back up their servers? So if there's a problem, you can recover your site um, or your server so that you can get your site back. Um, do, do you know? Do they know? Have they told you? Have you asked the question? Maybe you should ask those questions. Uh, if I go back then to security, let's talk about the security. Do they just block your IP address preemptively? And one thing that I did forget to mention in all of that, I tried to access her hosting account. It blocked my IP address and they changed her password and didn't tell her. She had to get in touch with them and get them to reset the password and tell her what it was reset to and then get in and change it back to something else but they didn't tell her that they had changed her password. They, no, we've just changed your password. You can't get in now. No, no notice whatsoever that there was a, a, an attempt on the account that they considered uh, malicious or suspicious. Um, so security is great. Security is fantastic. You really need to think about the security of your site and you need to be able to block malicious attempts. You need to be able to... Um, blacklist IP addresses because we all know, well, I hope you know, hope you realize, I know anyway, that um, you know, people will just hammer a website from multiple IP addresses trying to follow a host, trying to find the holes in it to go and, to go and uh, compromise it. But how do they handle the security? Do they do what my client's um, provider has done to her and just locked her out completely and not given her any support on it? Or do they handle that proactively? Um, is it easy enough to get in touch with them and say, listen, I'm having some trouble. I keep getting locked out. What's going on? Um, and and work, will they work with you to resolve those sorts of issues? I've had that with a couple of my clients on my hosting services uh, and we've resolved them. It, it was some very simple things. Sometimes it was a um, security rule update that had gone through and was just hitting something as a false false positive so we just went and fixed it up we, we went in we just go and fix it up we went in we did some investigation we tracked it all back we got that result and I worked with the client through all of that um, how easy are they to contact do they provide you a chat service do they provide you an email do they provide a help desk do they have a phone number do, do, can you get in touch with them easily enough um, the other thing that you should consider is where are your emails hosted? If they are hosted on the server and you're using something like IMAP to get access to them, then those emails will always be on the server. Um, if you migrate your web server elsewhere, you need to make sure that you migrate your email accounts so that you keep all of those emails and keep all your history. Uh, that needs to be taken into consideration. It's not just a straightforward, oh, we'll just swap everything over and it'll all be sweet. Sometimes you need to consider it. Um, it is, by the way, why I recommend people use a mail service provider like Zoho or Google or Microsoft or something like that because they handle all of that. They handle all your delivery. They handle all the spam filtering. Um, and when you change your, your servers over, you just make sure that your MX records are still pointing to them and it 
it all just works. So there's a whole heap of things that you need to consider when you're looking at your domain name registrar and your hosting provider. Um, I know I've rabbited on here and I know I, I've got a little bit passionate and I am quite passionate about this stuff. It's really important to me that my clients are looked after um, and that they own their business assets, that they have control of their business assets. And a website and a domain name is a business asset. Um, and if you don't have that, then you're lost. What happens if your hosting provider goes down and they've got all of this stuff and you can't transfer your domain name to a new provider because they've got it locked, like this provider's got it locked, um, that it, you can't get access to your hosting service so that you can get a backup of it. You, you need to consider all of these things in, in the fullness of it. Um, so I'm a reseller. I use a registrar who I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a domain reseller. I use a registrar who I trust. Uh, yep. They have issues every now and again. Everyone does. Every business does, but they respond to the requests and they allow me to act on behalf of my clients. My clients only have to get in touch with me and we'll deal with it. But if they need to, if they can't get in touch with me, they know who to contact to get access to their domain. If, if things go sideways or I'm just not being responsive which doesn't happen um it hasn't happened yet anyway how's that uh my hosting provider uh, I I um I I use a reputable supplier I create accounts and I create servers for people I set them up um, we set them up uh and I provide admin accounts admin panels for all my accounts so you can log in to your hosting if you want you can self-administer it you can create emails you can create databases you can do all those things that you want to or log a ticket with me and i'll get it done for you um and the other thing that we do as part of our services is we also do all the wordpress and plugin updates so if you're hosting a wordpress site with us um and i've helped you set that up or transfer it across you're just in our you're just in our routine updates once a week. We go through, we update all the plugins, all the WordPress instances, uh, address all that. If we find problems with plugins, we'll do a little bit of investigation and work out what we need to do to fix it, whether you need to replace it or make some recommendations for you as to how that can be resolved. Uh, but you will always be up to date. Now, I didn't, this isn't necessarily a sales pitch, but it might explain why I get so passionate when I see my clients on other providers having problems. And I work with their providers all, regularly. But when they have problems like this, it's really, really frustrating because all we want to do is a good job by our clients. So have a think about it, guys. What do you know about your domain registrar? What do you know about your hosting provider? Do you have all your login details? Have you got them stored off somewhere safe? If not, go and grab them. And if you need some help, feel free to give us a call or um, a chat at us or send us an email and I'll see if I can help you. Take it easy. Bye. <music>